Hi everybody, I'm Ed. And I'm Barb. And, and we're, we're the Streeters. Streeters. Welcome to the RDRV live stream tonight. We're doing a Q&A. Hey everybody. And just put your questions in the chat with a Q and uh, we'll be happy to answer. We'll try anyway. If not, we got a lot of people out there. Uh, our viewers will chime in if, if it's something that we can't help you with. And uh, a lot of great knowledge out there on our channel. So. Welcome everyone. And... Um, I hope you had a great week. I heard a lot of people are getting ready for the festivals, and we had a busy week with. Um, well, with Thanksgiving, yeah. But there so. were some uh, markets open this weekend, so I hope those of you who attended the markets uh, with your stained glass had, did very well. Yeah, had success in sales this past weekend, so that's good. We uh, we spent the weekend getting the uh, glass blowing furnace up and running, and now it's running and. Uh, we are, psh, our sale online for our Cyber Monday sale online went crazy with our Christmas ornaments today. So take advantage of that. You still got about five hours and uh, to take advantage of that sale on our hand-blown Christmas ornaments. So. Yeah, if you're on the mailing list, uh, check your email. You would have received a code for the Black Friday sale. And many of you took advantage of and the- And we, we greatly appreciate that too. Uh, Black Friday and the, uh, it, I think it extended, became 15% off and then the Cyber Monday sale. So a lot of you guys took advantage of it. Thank yeah, you, you so much. And we, we will be it. shipping your ornaments starting tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah. So um, if you have a question, put it in the chat with a Q. We do have an event coming up December the 2nd. We're going to have our pop-up gallery where we uh, feature all of our latest ornaments. And we have brand hundreds, new work. Yeah. Brand new work, hundreds of ornaments for sale. And if it, it rains, we bring it all inside. Right. We'll be inside in the warehouse and in the gallery. Yeah, so we'll, we'll uh, our annual parking lot sale for our ornaments is, of course, in the parking lot. And um, But if it does rain, we'll bring everything inside and make sure that we have everything uh, quite organized for your shopping convenience. Okay, so let me check. Uh, see if we have any questions. Uh, hey, Magali, thumbs up to you. Hey, Magali. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Thank hey, you, everybody, for tuning in tonight. Yeah, we have members here. Carol's here. Joan's here. So, um, yeah, hello to all the viewers. Hello to all the members. Martha's here. 
uh, Shaz Ray, Julie Graves. Ray's Hey, here. Ray. Hey. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Good I'm glad you could you. Uh, chime in tonight. It's nice to see you. Hope you guys had a nice Thanksgiving. Um, I had a question come in. Uh, mm -hmm. Carol wants to know. Oh, there's a question before that, but since I already started on Carol's, I'll continue okay. on. Okay, all right. Last week, Ed talked about three different running pliers, the 8-inch ones, the short ones, and the silver schnitz. Is there any reason to use different pliers? Do they break glass differently? Carol, they they don't necessarily... Well, I, I take that back because the silver schnitz will actually help you eliminate the rainbow cuts uh, because the head on the the rubber around the breaking point of it uh, turns and you can kind of chase it around. But I prefer myself, the eight inch running pliers are nice and they're, they're what everybody's kit comes with. Um, I feel they're even too cumbersome for my big hands. I like, I like to use the little, the little six and a half inch um, running pliers. And I, I think that they're just, uh, I'm just going to, turn this white paper around so that you can kind of see it. So I just used a little six and a half inch running pliers and uh, I really I really enjoy them. And these are the one these are uh, these are Lepinette pliers. I found that the grips are more comfortable than the cheaper pliers. And I also found that having that six inch handle on them uh, allows you to uh, break more glass and much I, I like them because they're not as heavy or cumbersome as the eight inch steel pliers I just don't like the steel pliers but now my silver schnitz um, probably one of the best uh, $129 or $118 that I've spent and uh, I really enjoy these I don't use them all the time but the silver schnitz definitely you know you have two different running pliers and you have the eight inch ones the eight inch ones, there's not a whole lot to them. It's just the way the jaws are made and they're really, I think they're too heavy. The silver schnitz are a great addition to your toolbox and the six and a half inch Lepinets running pliers are another great addition to your toolbox. Okay, Todd asked, let's see, where was that question? Todd, let's see. Uh, he wonders if we would talk about glass cutters and what is our go-to tools and why. That's going to be the subject of glass our chat. Glass chat, stick around, 740. So we're going to be talking about that. Uh, let's see. And hey, Todd, thanks for tuning in tonight. If this is your uh, first time to the channel, yeah. we want to welcome you. Thank you for tuning yeah. in. Thank you for tuning in. He's been talking about the difference between the different uh, lead dikes. And yes, that's, that's great. Upgrading your lead dikes makes a world of difference okay um question i see that todd it says i see the toyo advertise uh a, super line, of cut, super a line of super cutters uh while a clever clever marketing tool i wonder practically if they are really super <laughs> what are your go-to professional quality cutters and why yeah so we'll be talking about that and why the super cutter yeah, and, is and you super. know what most of, most of you and we'll talk about this most of you when you learn how to cut with a glass cutter that's your go-to glass cutter they can name them anything that you want the super cutter has been around for the 40 years that i've been in business i know why they named it the super cutter because it's so super heavy no i'll oh. tell you exactly why oh. because when you go from this to yeah. this it's super. This is super. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And that's, that's what right, happened. Barb. That's yeah. what happened. Yeah. So when you go from the little super. the little ball head uh, ball tip cutter to uh, to a brass handle cutter, yeah, it does kind of change things quite a bit. Yeah. So the super cutter's been around forever, and it's always been called the super cutter as long as I can remember. Uh, and ever since I've, I've been, been cutting around glass, for a long yeah. time too. So. so. Okay. Uh, Am I missing any questions? Just shout it out to me and I will... Well, we got Carol's question and... Uh, okay, but there's... Ray more. says hi. Hey, everybody, give Ray a thumbs up because okay. he works much harder than everybody thinks that he does for us. We appreciate it so much, Ray. And you know what? While we're thanking everybody, let's go ahead and thank our sponsor of tonight's show. And that sponsor is Sunshine Glassworks. We appreciate everything that Sunshine does. And don't forget, if you're looking for tools... 
or glass, Sunshine stocks over 1,500 different colors and combinations of textures from the different manufacturers, along with all the hand tools that you'll need. So, uh, and the blackback foil is back in stock, guys. Yeah, so give them a call and order your, your foil. I know you need it. Uh, Julie asks, uh, she found some solder, solder by OT. O-T, O-A-T-E-Y, 60-40, four uh, in, inch, I don't know what that means, one quarter inch maybe. What does, oh, four in one point. What does the four in one mean? Uh, it's probably, uh, that's probably a solder, well, they use a lot less uh, lead in the solder for electronics, but... It seems to me like if you tried to melt that, Julie, you're probably going to, it's probably a flux core solder, but I would check it out and make sure. But, you know, when you find these, that, that's kind of a goofy solder. I've never even heard of that one. That one's probably one for the recycle bin, yeah. just in case, because you don't want to do some work with it and then try and uh, have to use another solder to finish up and you know what? That's one for the recycle. You could always try it out and see if it works on a piece of scrap. If you want to. Yeah, if I mean, you the, if you wanted to, trouble. that would be fine. But, uh, Julie, I've never heard of that brand before. I no. hadn't either. Jules, this is a question she had, and I've been looking for the answer for you, oh. Jules. I'm sorry. Um, the question. I was looking for the drill bits you used for oh. the string of fish. What are the bits you use? Well, I used a spearhead bit, but right now everybody's out of stock of them. Because even they're we're a, out of stock. Even we're out of stock. They're a, they're a set of seven bits. And we're out of stock. Our storefront is out of stock. And uh, so right now, uh, basically, but that bit, I use an eighth inch spearhead bit. Sometimes you can find them at other um, home improvement stores. I haven't looked at but there yet. I hadn't, I hadn't looked there. And uh, you're going to find they're, they're quite a bit pricey. So Okay. But the eighth inch spearhead is what you use, what I use for the fish. So, and that's, you know, that's a great size. So we use that, you know, when we're putting in heavy glass shower doors, the thick glass shower doors. We use the eighth inch first and then we just keep going a little bit bigger until we work ourselves out where we um, can actually drive in our expandable anchors. So, she's hiding. Okay. She's, talking but she, she is and we, we asked her to eat her supper before she left the house and she, she said would. no okay so Aaron uh, asks hi Aaron um, I recently got a pair of silver schnitz running pliers and would love a demo on how you use them for tricky cuts okay but when you know we show that but it's probably going to happen tonight because he's doing a cutting demo and showing the cutters so Stay tuned. It'll be coming up towards uh, after the 30-minute mark sometime. Right. Okay. So thank you, Ray, for that link to Sunshine. Thank you, Ray. Appreciate Sunshine it. Sunshine appreciates it, and we appreciate it. Thank you, Ray. And Rochelle uh, was wondering how the new studio was coming along. Okay. December 1st starts my... Friday. <laughs> Friday. I can't believe it's here already. I know, man. I can't it's even awesome. spend any money until December 1st. Um, so I've got my plans of what I'm going to do, but my first project is to clean out the closet. So uh, that's where we it are It houses right now. a bunch of uh, artwork, and we, so we have to move all that. Oh, I, I moved a lot of artwork this weekend. I cleaned out the hall closet and made room for the things that are in that other closet. So should be interesting. I'll have a list of everything that I'm buying soon. I, I keep changing my mind. But thank you for asking. Yeah, it's we're working on it. We'll, and we'll be documenting the whole process. So it's a December through May 20, 2024 project. So this one I have to stay on track. I'm accountable. Yeah. I'm held accountable. Uh, let's see. Les Cole has a question. Uh -huh. Ed, do you find that liquid flux is easier to clean than gel or paste? Hey, Les, you know what? I have... Uh, you, I used paste flux once, and I didn't like the way it smoked, and I switched over to the ruby flux. So, uh, yes, less I prefer the the liquid flux, and the ruby flux is much easier to clean than paste flux. 
So that's where I'm at on that, Les. I'm a Ruby Flux guy. Now, we did get a sample of Amorway's new gel flux. Gel flux, yeah. But we haven't had a chance to try it out yet. But we got some soldering coming up and I uh, got some repairs. I think I'll use it on repairs. Yeah, we'll do it a little. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's a uh, comparison, maybe. Yeah. If it's we'll good, see how we'll it let flows. You know. yeah, yeah, and uh, and we'll let the let you know, and we're gonna let uh, Amorway know. So Carol said she just got a box of glass delivered. We uh, must be give you you good luck. I guess Carol <laughs> <laughs> bring you good luck. Of course, I yeah. So I, I think she says she lives only about an hour from Bullseye. Oh, nice. Sweet, right? Yep. Uh, Todd asks. I've recently picked up a pair of miter shears for cutting more extreme angles in lead cane. What is your approach to cutting extreme angles? Yeah, hey Todd, you know what I do? I have a, I, the only saw that I have in my stained glass room is a band saw, and that's exactly what I use, and I've used that same band saw for 29 years, um, only because I had to buy a new one 29 years ago. And uh, I use that band saw for my extreme angles, otherwise, I use my Lepinette uh, lead nippers, my Supreme lead nippers. And, um, but yeah, so, hey, if you found a tool that works great for you, I'm on it and I, I like it. You know, everyone, everyone on this channel has totally different uh, techniques that they use. And that's why we're all here because we can share them. So if you found a tool that allows you to do extreme miters on lead without using a saw, good deal. We appreciate it. Uh, Kat St. Jane said Ace Hardware did have the bits in stock. Uh, Carol says OT is a plumbing supply giant. So, yeah, I wouldn't use that solder. Yeah, that's. I don't think that I would do that. Ray yeah. said Amazon has the one eighth inch spearhead bits for glass back in stock. They're back in okay. stock. Okay, I'll, I'll check my storefront and get them back on the page. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Ray. Uh, Carol says she's 20 minutes away from Bullseye. Oh, 20 minutes. That's even better. <laughs> but we're not rubbing that in. <laughs> That's good. That sounds like a lot of fun. Carol, if I lived 20 minutes from Bullseye, we would have a, a cash flow problem. Todd says thank you. You're welcome, Todd. Hey, thanks for tuning in tonight. Uh, let's see. Um, I think I've got all the questions, but if you all have a question, put it in the chat with a kid. And hello back to Kansas. Thanks for tuning in yeah, tonight. Yeah, we've got people from all over the country here t today. Um, so, and we really do appreciate you guys tuning in every Monday night. Yes. Harbor Tools has good tools, but they don't have quality. The electric tools break real quick. Um, okay. Yeah. I want to go to Harbor Tools and get some, uh, some things. They have some good stuff. You just have to watch what you buy. Yeah. Cause if you we want use... quality, you have to pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> That's right. Well, you should have said so, right? Yes. Should have said you wanted quality. Yes. Yeah, that's funny. There's a joke. Of, there's a joke. But what? The quality. Yeah. 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 If you wanted quality, you should have asked for it. Yeah. I have friend, a friend that friend was told of ours that. That was told that. Yeah. From quality printing. <laughs> I said, if you wanted quality, you should have asked for it. <laughs> that's the name of the company. Anyway. anyway. Carry on, soldiers. I think they're... Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Thank, thank you, you, Michelle. It's, it's, and you, you guys are appreciated, too, so thank you. Okay. All right. We need some questions. All right, Give anybody. Questions. I know we're working on Christmas stuff. Um, Let's go ahead and start it with the cutters. Yeah, Talk I guess we could. Cutters. We'll take questions from could. the cutters as they come. Tell us the pros and cons and what you like, what you don't like. Well, I got some cutters here, and this this is just a little sample of what I got in my in my in my box here in the YouTube room, okay? So, um, let's switch over to the to the small screen bar. Oh, we got a question, hold yeah, on. Yeah, about delivery in Montreal. We can ship the ornaments to Montreal. What we run into is the- Additional postage. The additional postage. And it gets a little bit uh, crazy and takes a little bit longer, but we can ship, yes. Okay, so we're going to our... I don't think that you can do that online. Though. We're going to our close-up cam. You would have to... 
You'll have to contact Send me an email. Barb. Yeah. Send me an email. So hey everybody, you see you see what I got here in front of me? This is uh this is quite uh, quite a collection of cutters. Now, some of these I have to give I am Alan credit for. Hey, buddy, I know you're not in tonight, but check us out on the live stream on the rerun. And I want to give I am Alan credit because he shipped me these these two uh, steel cutters. Okay, so these are steel wheeled cutters. This particular cutter, this is a Miller's Falls cutter, and it has a six turret head on it. You can see that? Mm. Yeah, yes. There right we there go. You see it. So now there are six different wheels the, of the same kind on this. And when you use them, drop it and chip it. Time for another one. You loosen the screw up, roll the turret, and cut it away. Uh, this, this cutter is a cutter that I used to keep in my pocket probably in the late 1970s, like 79 through 80, 81. Prior to that, this is what I had in my pocket with cutting glass. A steel wheeled cutter. It was probably a Red Devil like this one. Or it was a, a cutter from Fletcher or C.R. Lawrence. Either one. C.R. Lawrence is really big in the commercial glass industry. And I'm guessing it was probably a C.R. Lawrence cutter. Okay. And now if... Anyone starting out and they don't oh, have this, the tools. This is a great cutter to learn on, Barb. Go to Home Depot, Lowe's, your hardware store. Six dollars. You can start cutting glass. You're out the door. And we're going to talk about, we're actually going to cut some glass with these cutters. So well, You'll have to tell them about the oil on that. I like, will. I, okay. I will. We'll tell them all about it. I don't it. want to interrupt you. And, although I and did. And if you got to, you know, when you buy oil, it comes in eight ounces. You know how much of that eight ounces you need over a 20-year period? About one ounce. So here's the thing. This is our other cutter. This is a nice little cutter here. Um, sometimes I'll catch myself using this if my hands are tired. This cutter here, this is a Thompson palm grip. And I really like this and it, and it works really well and it's great for cutting patterns. Okay, so you all know that Ed, Ed's cutter is this one, okay? So hey Todd, this is the super cutter. This glass cutter has been in my pocket over 20 years. I have used this glass cutter for over 20 years. Same head, and I've decorated it a little bit, and everybody seems to like this. And if you haven't done this to your cutter, it's a great finger rest, and it works really well. That's how I hold my cutter. And that solder, quarter-inch foil wrapped around, a little bit of solder, manufacture it and make it fit your finger, and you're awesome. So... Let me show you what, um, let me show you what Bowl has done. This is Bowl's straight line cutter. I'll turn it sideways so you can see it. And I'm going to lay this square out. There you go. So you can see this. So now it has a, it has a finger where you press your, you put your finger right there. This is great for uh, cutting straight lines. Also, when we're breaking glass, y'all, this little thing that looks like a tongue depressor on the end, that's exactly what that's for. Boom, and you break the glass. So this is the 2000, and we're gonna cut a little bit of glass with this. This is the Bowl 2000 uh, straight edge cutter. Now, you wanna talk about a super cutter? Hey, y'all, this is it right here. This is the Bowl 4000 brass handle threaded finger grip. And that thing definitely will help. I, I'm actually, I use this to show y'all what this cutter looks like. So I'm not going to put a, you know, uh, solder on the end of this. But I want you to see this. This is the Bowl 4000. Y'all, this cutter is so sweet. It's about the same weight as my super cutter, as my Toyo. But, um, man, it is just really a nice cutter. And it's got a, a nice heavy-duty wheel on it. And now I want to show you this cutter here. This is a pistol grip. Many of you guys use this cutter and have it on your toolbox or in your arsenal for your glass cutting convenience. 
So this is a good cutter, okay? One thing Ed doesn't like about it is how the head swivels way too much. But here's the thing. Those of you that have uh, problems with your hands, arthritis or what have you, when you're using this cutter here, you're only using pressure from your wrist down. So if you don't have it up here in your forearm, up here, you're, when you're using this cutter, it's coming from from your wrist down, okay? So, you know, here I am, and you, you guys know that I like color. So in honor of, of uh, Barbara's beautiful jacket that she's wearing tonight, <laughs> I got a piece of pink glass to celebrate. So we're going to look at this right here, and y'all, we all know what this is. I just got this out of the back. This is a piece of spectrum from a, a former life, I think. So anyway, because, yeah, the price tag that was on it that I took off was definitely a former life price. So um, we're going to do a couple of different cuts, and I'll have my running pliers all ready for you and everything. The first thing we're going to do is square up our glass. Now, if you don't have a square for your... If you don't have a square for your arsenal, you really need one. And remember, guys, it doesn't matter what cutter you're using. The one thing that you want to be sure of is to never change the pressure. Is to never change the pressure on your cutter. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start out with Ed's glass cutter because here we go. Okay. So this one, because I'm squaring it up, I'm going to use my grousing pliers, and I'm not going to go right on the very edge because you can't. You can't go right on the very edge there. And the, but you got to pull down and away. Okay. Nice. So now we have it squared up. So now we have it squared up. Now Ed's, I've used my cutter. Let's go to another one, Barb, and see what that sounds like. So I'm going to leave enough room that I can use my running pliers. When we get down, we're going to split. When we go to split this, we're going to use our silver stand. So here is what we're going to do, guys. We're going to we're going to take our Miller's Falls and we're going to do a cut. Now, did you hear that? I didn't change the pressure. I did everything just the way I normally do it. Now I'm gonna bring this up close so you, that you can see. I think we're right where we need to be, Barb, right? Oh yeah, there we go, right there, and one. Now that's with my six and a half inch runners. And like I said, y'all, I really, really, really. And the new studio is going to have a cutting table for me. And uh, so now we're going to try this thing. Okay, this is the Red Devil steel wheel. Here we go. That's enough to drive you insane right there, y'all. So here's my silver schnitz. We're going to go right underneath. These are my silver schnitz. And I'm, I'm sure that some of that is the cutter itself, the wheel itself. Which cutter did you use? I used this, this one here, but, you know, Larry, I mean, um, I am Alan said he got this at an auction. This, this cutter is probably 50 years old. And he hasn't even dipped it in oil. And I haven't even dipped it in oil. So, so there these, you go. These two work really, they work all right. I mean, they're nothing, nothing special to write home about. But let's pull, go beside this score. Because you never want to go over your existing score. There we go. So you can get a little bit better action on that narrow score by using your running pliers and pulling down and away. So this being a pink, being a cranberry, we know it breaks funny. But here we go. This is our, this is our pistol grip. And now we're going to run that. Okay. 
So now I want you to hear this. This is the, ah, uh, you know what? Let's save these bowl, these uh, heavy duty glass cutters for last. So this is our, this right here, this is our Thompson palm grip. And here we go. And remember guys, I am not changing the pressure and when you, when you drive into a, a hole like that, you drove in it, guess what? Drive out, okay? Just drive out of it. Okay, so I want you to see these. These are the silver snips. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna turn my head just like that and I'm gonna go right to the middle now you see how I've got my running pliers, but watch this. I just ran this from here to here and I'm gonna jump in behind it and finish it out. Now I'm running glass sideways y'all, but that's because <laughs> this top head spins. And you, you can do this with other running pliers, but you can't chase the run with other running pliers because you can't turn them sideways like you can the silver snits. So anyway, this is a beautiful piece of glass, and we're sharing it here with y'all on the RDRV channel. And now, let's let's jump into the. This is our straight line cutter, and now Barbara and I got a job last week, and we've got a bunch of three eighths glass, heavy glass, to cut shelves out of for the new comic store coming to town. And um, so this is going to be my go-to cutter this week, I think. Here we go. Let's try it. Listen to this. Oh my, and here's the thing, if you're, if you don't change the pressure on your glass cutter, it doesn't matter if your cutter is 20 years old or two days old, because the same amount of pressure doesn't allow your cutter wheel, uh, uh, new cutters are typically what we call hot, okay? New cutters are hot. This, this one this bowl 2000, this is hot. If I stand on this thing and put a lot of pressure on it, we'll never even get the glass broke. And we'll definitely never be able to cut heavy glass with it if we stand on it. So we don't want to do that. Another thing that I want to share with you guys is the fact that when uh, inside this housing, not only does it have the part number for it, but it's got a piece of felt in the bottom. And that goes in there. And then you take this and you... It doesn't rattle, it doesn't do anything, and it doesn't fall out onto the concrete and ruin this really good glass cutter. So here we go, guys. This is the one we've been waiting on. This is the bowl 4000. That's B-O-H-L-E. -E. Bowl. bowl. Now these cutters are available. This is such a good glass cutter. You see the angle on the head, okay? When I'm cut using this cutter, I tilt the angle and the screw head to me, okay? So here we go. Let's take a look at this and see what happens. You're gonna love this cutter, y'all. Drive out, drive out. Okay, so now before, <laughs> Before you use your silver snits again, make sure you set the set everything up the way it needs to be. And I'm gonna turn it sideways again. I'm gonna come right here and run it sideways and break it. So here's the thing, y'all, about glass cutters. There is a huge variety of them available to you. The whole thing about it is, about glass cutters, is what you do with them. Most of the time, it's not the cutter that messes up the glass. It's typically the cutty, which is the person holding the cutter. So by making sure as you're, when you're scoring the glass, you use the same amount of pressure start to finish. 
When you cut straight lines, you should pull the glass cutter to you with a square. And when you cut patterns, you should push the glass cutter so that you can see what's going on. So I'm not sure. I hope that that helps you. Maybe we'll get a short or two out of this too. And we're gonna, but we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna, we're gonna do all of our cutters. Boom. So try to remember, if you have a square, you should use it. And when you're cutting straight lines, pull it. And when you're cutting curves or patterns, push it. Push it, pull it, it all works. So I hope this helped you all out with our glass cutters. So you can see I have many different cutters, but I promise y'all, and you can ask Barb, this is the one that's in my pocket every morning when I leave the house. And this is the one that um, I make my living with, right there. Okay, and we're going to talk about how to replace that head in just clean a minute. Clean it. We're going to talk about it. how to clean it. Okay, but I have another question from MB Volker. Hey, man. How do you tell if a rheostat is going bad? We have a Weller rheostat and iron, but the temperature seems to fluctuate. Sometimes the solder melts, sometimes not. Well, a couple of things can be can be doing that. It's not the rheostat, probably. The iron, and we have a little video that shows you how to how to remove the tip from your iron and how to clean everything and allow the power to filtrate right down into that copper tip. So a lot of times it's it's that part of it, or it could be one side of the element in the iron itself is burning out. Most of the time it's not the rheostat, but uh, because you can take a rheostat, okay, and see if to check and see if it's working. It's just plug a light, a light, a lamp into it, and then turn it on and run it all the way up and back it down. You know, so that basically that's what a rheostat is. It's a a wattage controller or a, a dimmer switch is all it is. And um, so those things, if most of the time though, uh, it's not going to be your controller it's going to be your iron okay i think i'm going to clean my glass cutter i want to clean cutters bar so i'm just going to put these back in my shoe box i love my shoe box okay Loca Loca yes i do i did get that email and i will uh get back in touch with you so this is what the spearhead bits look like y'all if you're now that they're back in stock, are you going to give me a close-up camera there? So that's what the spearhead, this is the eighth inch one, y'all. This is the eighth inch one. And they are available back online, so that's good. Okay. Y'all must be drawing a lot of glass. <laughs> That's all good. Okay, you talked about the rheostat and the weller iron yeah, and all that. Yeah, we're good. Uh -huh. Okay. Get up here. Get up on this table. Okay, Come. Angel asked about paint. Yeah. Magali answered uh, about the Thank paint you, without a kiln. And so that she's all set. Uh, God wants to know how often you replace the head on this cutter. This, this cutter head has been on here for 20 years, Todd. The cutter head has? Yeah, the head, yeah. Okay. The head. He's lost it a few times. <laughs> I've lost it a few times. It. But one thing I never... Now, I'm very fortunate. I have wooden floors in my shop. So when if I do drop this, most of the time it it's, it's not going to get hurt. So, But I keep this in my pocket all the time. And, and for that reason, uh, I'll share with you all how to clean... Clean your cutter. Most of the time, if your cutter starts skipping, y'all, it's because there's so much trash in there from cutting glass and picking up desiccant and not cleaning your glass correctly before you start cutting it. And guess what? Having it in your pocket. That's me. I have it in lint. my pocket. Lint. <laughs> it's lint. a lint magnet. So, it's got uh, so we do have a video that shows you how to clean your cutter head. And I believe it or not, y'all, it works. We've had a lot of... We had a lot of great comments on, oh my gosh, Ed, all I did was take a needle and clean out my cutter head, and my cutter started working again. 
Yeah. Go figure. We don't have a needle. I don't have a needle, but I, I can get you pretty close to what you need to be doing. Give me a close up there, Barb, please. Okay. I have some more questions, okay. but this, we're fine. So we all know the housing that holds the wheel. Well, when you hold your cutter up like this, when you hold your cutter up like that, hang on. There we There we go. You see that little area right below my wheel, right there where my fingernail is? That area is what will cause your cutter to skip. That area right there. Right there. Where? Right there. Oh. Right below the wheel. Okay. Right below the right wheel. below it or above it? Below it. Okay. Under, right below it. Okay, turn it over. Is it bigger on the other side? No, it's not. I just wondered what it was. Okay. All right. So what you need to do is if you hold that up to the light, most of the time, most of you, you can't see light through that. And that will, that will all that dirt and trash and desiccant will cause your cutter to skip. So take a little needle or a pin like you would get out of your shirt collar or something and stick that right in there over a sheet of white paper and look at the junk that falls out of there and you'll be surprised. So, And if you just clean your cutter head every now and then, you'll find that um, that, that helps, allows it to last much longer. Thank you, Ray. Ray, what in the world? We're going to get the doc over there in the, in the thing dancing for us. Yeah, let's do an orange dance there. All right, let's do an orange dance. Is it going orange? No. Yeah, it's orange. Is it? Is it? Is it? I don't know. Here. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. We really appreciate you. Thank that you, Ray. was so sweet. That's Thank awesome. You. You're amazing. You're amazing. So anyway, so when you you know, when you have those those little things, sometimes it's as easy as just cleaning the tool that you're working with. So and the reservoir in those cutters, you, you don't even use oil in them. Just you, you can get a little, yeah, a little stainless steel cup, put a paper towel in it, a little bit of oil, and dip it every now and then. You know, the whole thing about the oil is so that your cutter doesn't cool off when you're pressing too hard. So uh, if you if you'll get it all straightened out with the amount of pressure that you're using for your glass cutter, and and you know, like we talked about last week too, guys. Um, last week we talked about how you, you can't hear your score sometimes on your glass cutter. And, you know, the reason because of that is because the glasses have different densities. So those densities will, um, those densities will make the glass cutter so that you can't hear them. Just like this has got... You know, this has got white in it right here. This is that pink. It's got white in it, and we'll listen to it. We don't need to watch. We can listen. So that's what happens. You can hear it as we get roll over white, roll over pink, roll over white, roll over pink. It goes, and you really, really don't want to push too hard. And, it, and if you just really keep that pressure the same, you'll find that cutting glass, it doesn't matter if it's really heavy duty textured, like um, like uh, like a, a Ripple or a Euroboros or something like that, because you know, they're textured on both sides. But if you don't change the pressure on your cutter, you will have much greater success getting your cuts out of the glass that you're working with, as opposed to not as opposed to changing the pressure, thinking you need to push harder because the glass is a little bit thicker. None of those things work, y'all. Okay, I'm trying to make sure I haven't missed anything. Uh, Karen Mills has been here with a member for 16 months. Karen. Congratulations, Karen. Thank you, Karen. We love we, you, Karen. We appreciate it. Um, Anita says... Uh, She's been using a Toyo cutter with a built-in oil channel. Um, yeah, don't use that oil channel, but you've got a good cutter. Yeah, you've got a, definitely a good cutter. The thing about it is that, you know, a lot of people will think that, uh, 
that because that reservoir is five inches tall, that you need to fill it up. And that's that's not really the case, y'all. Uh, this cutter has had oil in it before, and it's really dirty up here. But most of this, what's dirty, is what's in my pocket. So. Anna wants to know how long it takes to uh, wear in a new cutter. Um, you know, it just depends on how much you use it. But you're, if you're using a new cutter, Anna, just make sure, you know, uh, take your old cutter and get your pressure where it is and then don't change it with your new cutter. Utilize that same pressure with your new cutter. Eventually... There is no certain time frame, I don't think, for a cutter to, to wear itself in. But um, if, you, if you take care of it, it should last you forever. Because they don't just wear out. Nowadays, the, the wheels on the glass cutters are carbide. Carbide's hard as nails. And it doesn't really anything but doesn't do anything but chip if you drop it. So if you drop your cutter, yeah, you're going to be finding yourself getting new cutters all the time but if not and they do make a little pouch that you can put on your on your jeans and keep your cutter inside that little pouch too and um, but I prefer to keep mine in my blue jean pocket and uh, try not to drop it so that I do have to get a new one so we don't want to do that again y'all this has been in my pocket this is 20 years uh, Todd's so, oh I'm sorry no same cutter okay <laughs> Todd said our YouTube shorts are great, and he found our demonstrations very helpful. Thank you, Todd. Um, that's very kind. Thank you. Yeah, we put a good one out today, and we'll have some, we try to get two or three out every week. Um, Ray loves us. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Ray. We, we love, love you, you too. too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. Another basic question: How do you gauge the pressure you pr uh, place on your cutter? I think we were talking about it. Uh, I think we were talking about it last week. Yeah. So Monday night last week, we came to the conclusion. We came to the conclusion. Someone said that you know a, a while back, one of their one of their teachers told them that eight pounds of pressure is what's required to cut glass. That's a little bit too technical for me. But it's but I will, true. But it's true. <laughs> but here's the thing: if you hold your cutter in your hand, take your finger and put it on the cutter wheel, and Depress the head. Now, I don't think we're going to depress the head and cut. Running, I mean, okay. grousers. Oh. Index knuckle underneath, thumb on top, down, and away. Okay. So there we go. Eight pounds of pressure. And you know, that to me, it just it seems like that's about right. Eight pounds of pressure. Okay. That seems about right. That is about right. We, we talked about it last week, and, and it, was a, it was a good um, Yeah, because you just depress the head and score. And let's see what happens. I don't know. It, yeah, it breaks like, like a There dream. you go. Show it to them. There you go. Uh, Michelle says straight white doesn't have a sound usually. Nope. That's correct. Nope. And anything with uh, more than two colors in it usually don't make a sound either. Unless those colors are blue. Here's the soft colors, y'all. The soft colors are blue and green. Black's very soft. Uh, just shades like that. But when you start doing stacking white inside of it, that's when you get the score, no score, score, no score. That's when you don't change that pressure, y'all. If you find yourself lifting up on the cutter head as you're going across the glass, you need to back up and make sure that when you're scoring that you really need to keep the cutter head depressed. Hold it back somewhat. <laughs> okay. Don't know why we would be frozen or buffering. I'm not sure why that would happen. Because um, it looks good from here. We're good here. Somebody. Uh, well, the, now Magali said that she was. And then Ray said that he was. But he's okay now. Everything um, okay? Maybe it's the weather. I'm not sure. Could be. I'm not sure. Um, let us know if everything is okay. Everything's okay now, I guess. 
Um, okay, let me go back up and check up here. Okay, Augustine Machine. Oh, Carol had a question. Ever try cleaning your cutter with dental floss? Uh, there you go. It's a, kind of the same thing. I just use it's a needle, a great but idea, yeah. yeah, it's a great idea. The clean kind, the wax kind. I yeah, the wax free kind, really, is what yeah. you want. Yeah. Okay, sounds no wax. good. Uh, the lacquer to evaporate just because of the temperature, but you can you can putty year round. It doesn't matter. Just keep on getting it. Yeah, it it will set up quicker with some sunshine, warm air, warm with air. some sunshine. Just you know, put it in the sunshine. Putty it in where you have a window, light coming in through a window. That's really You'll all you need. You'd be surprised how much the sun will yeah. heat up oh, yeah. a piece of glass. You'd be surprised. Um, there was a question, and I, I know I missed it, um, and I'm not sure how far up it is, but someone was asking about now that the weather's changed, humidity uh, has changed, the weather's colder, will that affect foiling and soldering well it will affect your foiling if you're going to be doing it outside so my little trick about that and this is just a simple trick and it's probably in most of our our uh, live streams because we talk about it all the time so in order to keep your glass from sweating is warm your glass up on a little griddle up to about you know 100 just put it on low and let your glass warm up so that when you pick the glass up your, your hands aren't hot, the glass is cold, and then you're going to produce sweat or humidity, and you won't be able to foil it quite as readily. So what you want to do is um, keep your the foil, you don't want to warm that up, but if you keep the glass warm and dry, the foil will stick much better for you. And then, of course, when you're soldering, when it's cold outside, turn your soldering iron up and eliminate all your breezes but do make sure that you have adequate ventilation. Yes, please. Always have adequate yeah, ventilation. Yeah, and when it's cold, you just don't need I was thinking breezes. About that you too. just need adequate ventilation. Yeah. You know, blow Nothing, the air out of the studio. Yeah, you just yeah, crack the storm window on the door on the studio or something. So, um, Richard Oyster said, just thought I'd check in and see you in action. Richard Oyster, <laughs> congratulations, my friend. Oh, my God. I know what this weekend was. <laughs> congratulations. Congratulations, Richard. Richard. It's good to see you here. Yeah, I hope you had a good, happy Thanksgiving. Thank I hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving. Did we say that tonight? Did happy we... Thanksgiving, everybody. I'm yeah. glad that the hol that holiday is out of the way. Black Friday is out of the way. Cyber Monday is here. Is, is here. And don't forget, we still are running our Cyber that Monday turkey, sale. I, the best thing about Thanksgiving is the turkey sandwiches the next two days. Especially when Ed sharpens the knives. Oh, my gosh. And we gosh. just cut them so thin. It's, they are so good. <laughs> it was like so good. My, I think it's my favorite holiday. Let's go on to Maine, Cam. Oh, look there, at us. Lady. Look at us. We're not even on these, camera. What happened? These grouse and pliers don't talk. No, they don't. <laughs> I'm sorry uh, about that. That's Jill. okay. We're all Richard, good. Richard, I'm sorry. That was no, that, that, that you know, us. so funny though, Richard, um we were talking about you this morning and and it was good, I promise you. It's always good when we talk about you. But we we were like, you know what? We got to call him tomorrow and tell him congratulations. So, congratulations, Dick. Okay. My friend. Maybe it's YouTube's not doing so well. I'm not sure what it is, but we look good here. Yeah, we're not dragging here or fumbling around. Uh, oh, Ed Forsman. Good to see you. It was nice to see you last week. Thanks for stopping in. He's having network problems. Uh, Ed is? Yeah. Okay. Is it our network problems? Are we having network problems? Taylor, are we having any network problems? Everything looks to be all the, all the lights are green. Okay, we'll check it out and see, but um, we'll keep going. <laughs> we'll keep going. Okay, heating pad is a good idea. Sure, why not? Yeah, the whole idea is to warm the glass up so that you don't have that difference in temperature between your hands and the glass, and then you're trying you're trying to foil humidified glass with dampness. It doesn't work. Okay, can you tell uh? Okay, our putty, uh, what putty we use, and do you use white 
uh, powder to clean. No. No. Our putty recipe is... Online. Online at ConwayGlass.com. Just go shopping to the shopping. Go to RDRV and... Um, and mix it the way it says and you'll be, And we have videos on it and all fine. that. Uh, we have our own recipe and we don't use whiting. No, it's just a, you know what, we can, we, we actually putty in the room right next to our glass gallery. So, yeah, we don't, we try not to make a mess, but the whole idea is to clean it up first. <laughs> oh, Dick, uh, Saturday evening at 5.15. Okay. Okay. Congratulations. Okay. It's back online. It looks good. For some reason, we keep locking up. Uh, let's see, Michelle, uh, do we sell the rods for the uh, jewelry boxes? Um, we do not, but if you'll give Sean at Sunshine a holler, he'll get you fixed up and get them right out for you. Hmm. Okay. Let me check something real quick. Uh, let's see. Are you looking for something? Or? The, you sell the rods for the, um, I just want to make sure boxes. all the con connections are good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, if you just, you're going to, with, uh, you'll have to buy 10 from Sunshine, but. Uh, you know, 10 outers and 10 inners. But, uh, I mean, I, I have them onesies and twosies, but the freight will just eat, eat you alive on them. Uh, well, not really. I mean, it's be like $10 freight. But um, if you just... Call? Jewelry box hinges. And they sell them as sets of 10 Yeah, each. yeah. There's 10. I mean, they you, you, when you buy them, you'll buy enough that you're going to have them for quite a while. Unless you're building a bunch of boxes, because you're only using like one inch of the big section and an inch and a half of the small section. So, Kinsley wants to know what is the best paper to use for tracing a pattern. Uh, their vellum paper always rolls up. Yeah, if you're gonna we, trace a pattern, we just the our pattern paper is on our Amazon on our Amazon storefront, and it's a forty pound. Uh, it's a roll that's 48 inches very, tall. Very, very reasonable. And 200 reasonable. feet long, and it's mm -hmm. 30-some dollars. And uh, we that's what we use. Uh, whether we're drawing our paper, our patterns or we're tracing our patterns, and that's what that's what we use. So. Well, we what we do is we do the patterns, and then we put contact paper we on both sides. We use clear contact paper. On yeah. both sides. So that sturdies it up. But so you, we don't have to use cardstock, but no, we could. No, we could use cardstock, but the windows that we work on are big, right, Ed? Well, we don't <laughs> use, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a different that's one kind technique, of technique. Right. So, yes, that's the way that you can and do that's it. that's the like way to do it. Cardstock or, you know. I found that contact. manila envelopes, mm -hmm. they work really well for making patterns for sun catchers, jewelry boxes, all of those things that'll fit on one side of that manila folder. That's what you need to be using that for. And then always put uh, contact paper over your pattern because it'll make it last forever and you'll never lose it. Well, uh, Kinsley's um, was talking about tracing a pattern and vellum is expensive too. And yeah. so, yeah, this trace it, this paper that we use, put it on a light box. You can see right through it. You can trace it. Yeah. So, and then you yeah. can, you know, put your contact paper over top of that and you're on you're on go. Yeah. So do we have any other questions? Did I miss any questions? I don't think. But you know, again, see there's that's there's just different techniques. So I think it's awesome. I think it's great that you guys took the time to tune in with us after spending a hopefully a wonderful weekend with family members so uh. so is it our audio that's bad okay all right i forgot what tool do you use to cut the box rods a file a file the edge of a file a good question <clears throat> yeah that's a good question cuz you know here's if you cut them with just pliers you actually have to file the copper tubing and so that you can break it because you want still want both ends to be open. And then one of our viewers shared a great way to not get solder in the hole on the hinge. Put toothpicks in it. 
Yeah. What a great idea. And I forget who shared that with us. Was it Rochelle? Uh, I think it was Rochelle Autorize. I, I don't know. I'm thinking it might have been. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, know. thanks One for the great. One of our regular people. <laughs> One of our smart, regular people. Uh, there was a good contact paper before or after you cut the pattern. Uh, I would do it before. before. Yes. Much easier. Yeah, much easier. One cutting. Okay. A file. Yes, Michelle. A file. A little a little file. Uh, we show a file. Actually, we have the... Michelle, we have the... Uh, it's a tiny file, like a jeweler's file, because that, that brass is so small. And you just use the edge of it. So you're using the file as actually a cutting tool, kind of like the blade of a hacksaw, but the blade of a hacksaw is way too big for working on those hinges. So. Todd wants to know what inspires us. Um, Gosh, what Just waking it? up every day inspires me. <laughs> Nature. Yeah, because uh, of where we live. talking about churches. Um, gosh, there's so many people. Well, nature, nature inspires us because of where we live here in the low country of South Carolina. So we have the river, we have the ocean. Uh, we have a, a tremendous amount of wildlife at our at that's accessible to us at any given moment. And then we also have one of the nation's top 10 sculpture gardens uh, 20 miles from us. And uh, that in itself is very inspiring. Uh, where can Michelle get that file? I'm not sure I have it on the I think website. it's on. It's a kit that's on our Amazon page. It's just, it's a kit and there's like 10 files in it. Okay. All right. Larry Mary said he uses uh, freezer paper uh, and then contact paper. Okay, that worked. Hey, Larry, thanks for tuning in tonight. Yeah, Larry. Good to see everybody here tonight. Um, hit that like button because we really appreciate it. If we you're do. watching this on the rerun, thank you very much. We're live every Monday night at 7 o'clock. Yep. And we talk about stained glass. And we just surpassed... 21,310 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you. Um, we love you guys. We're going to head out. We're going to go get some supper. Go I'm not even eat. sure what we're going to eat. I'm not even I had, sure. I, was, I didn't cook anything today. Uh, we probably still have leftovers. But uh, anyway. Karen, we look forward to seeing you. Uh, got a little proposition anyway. for Denver later on in the February. year. February. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Richard, you can probably get a tiny file at the auto parts store. Yes, you probably can. Yeah, that's a good idea, too. Okay, everyone. We're going to head out. It's 8 o'clock. See you soon. Thank you See all you for soon. tuning in tonight. And your kind words last us forever. Thank you, guys. We appreciate you. Good night. You. And remember, and, uh, I'm Ed. And I'm Barb. And we're the Streeters. Thank you. Bye-bye.